Coming to you from Knights of Horror Studios, it's the Mindless Horror Podcast with your host, Anthony Zaragoza. Today's guest, Tricks the Trickster. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Anthony Zaragoza! Hello, everyone. My name is Anthony from the Knights of Horror, and welcome to the Mindless Horror Podcast. We have an amazing show for you guys tonight. We have Tricks the Trickster. We've been trying to get her on for some time. We've got her on. She's here today to talk with us her amazing haunt career and and what she's done in the haunt industry. And we are very excited for you guys to hear that. But before we do that, let's update you in the horror and haunt world. Uh, we got a lot of stuff coming up this week. We got a lot of stuff that's coming in the future. So let's get right to it with the Awaken the Spirits going on this weekend. We will be at Awaken the Spirits. I cannot be more excited for this. The first convention since 2019 that we are doing, and I'm super fucking stoked for that. It's going to be a fun time, man. We're going to be there all weekend grabbing grabbing a bunch of content. We're going to be uh, doing a lot of uh, filming, hanging out with friends. Birthday is going to be this Friday, and we're going to be celebrating the, the birthday, the 23rd. It's going to be a lot of fun. I cannot wait. Hope you guys see there. Grab your tickets. There's only a few left, um, and I want you guys to enjoy it. So let, let's fucking let's do it. Uh, not Scary Farm. They've been announcing a lot of stuff recently as far as uh, the event goes. We have uh, a new scare zone coming, the Goring 20s. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be in the in front of the Charles M. Schultz Theater, so that should be a lot of fun. As well as the announcement of all of their entertainment shows that will be at the event this year. Most notably, my favorite coming back, Puppet Up. I cannot wait to see Puppet Up. It's almost like, you know, they take away the, the hanging, which was pretty controversial with, with its content, and they bring in Puppet Up, which is, in my opinion, Uncensored can be a lot of controversial, but I don't care because I love that kind of comedy, and I have a lot of fun watching that. But, you know, that's just me. I, I cannot wait for Puppet Up to come back, as well as a lot of the other new shows coming to the event this year. Another one I'm looking forward to is Wicked Drums, going to be coming in the Hollow this year, which is sounding like a lot like the Blood Drums again, so super excited for that. Orlando trip is coming fast and near, and we cannot wait to get out to Orlando, Florida for the very first time to check out Halloween Horror Nights for their 30th anniversary. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, they just recently announced the HHN Icons Captured. It's going to be a collaborative maze with all the HHN Icons from the past, and they're going to have a, basically a big battle royale. Towards the end, you're going to see a winner every night could be changing, so you're going to have to go through that multiple times. One night, a winner could be Jack. One night, a winner could be Chance. A winner could be the Caretaker. Who knows? You're just in the right luck if you find your favorite icon that wins. So we'll see what happens. And lastly, Halloween Kills. The uh, much-anticipated sequel to the 2018 Halloween uh, continuation from Halloween 1978 is getting a novelization adaptation coming this October as well as the release this October. So if you guys are fans of reading and you want to get more detailed into the story... Go ahead and pick the Halloween Kills novelization coming out this October. Super excited for this. I love reading. Should be a lot of fun. We have a great show for you guys tonight. Uh, we have a uh, Tricks the Trickster on, and we're about to get her on right now. Now let's get to our guest for today's episode. Madhouse Podcasting Network. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our guest, Trix the Trickster. How you doing, Trix? <laughs> sounds Hi. Ex sounds excited. <laughs> yeah. Sounds just want to make sure you guys know it's me. <laughs> yes. Uh, Trix, we just finished up an amazing weekend over at the Halloween Depot. Uh, selling the merch and also just having a good time. Uh, oh, yeah. So fun. successful. Good weekend. Thank you again for the help too. Oh no problem. It was it was a really fun time. Really yeah, fun I mean time. those Halloween Depot guys, they really know how to throw an event. Oh, Everyone yeah. I've been at is just getting better and better. Yeah, it seems like it's it's getting more crowded and crowded as well too, which is good. It is. That's why they've expanded to two days. Yeah, that way they give everyone a fair opportunity to really walk around and and check it out too. And the night, I think yeah. the night ones honestly were just so refreshing, just because it's. It's usually the end of the day, and it's a lot cooler. And I think they were thinking the same thing. It's it's a lot cooler at night. Yeah. So, 
a lot, it definitely it was a lot of fun. brought a scarier dynamic too. Yeah, especially when it got night. You know, the, I know uh, the first day you were sliding, and then the second day you were um, on on the stilts, which was a lot of fun. So we got to see the yes. two versions of tricks that we uh, that we get to see a lot in the parks and and whatnot. So that was oh, a lot yeah. of fun. Um, but how you doing? You doing you doing okay since Saturday? <laughs> You oh, I'm doing good. You know, I'm, I'm a little sore, but it's it's always going to be sore after any right? event. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a lot of stretching, yeah, but yeah. doing really good. That's like good. it was such a good event. By the way, for those of you watching at home, we uh, inserted the actual photo of Trix the Trickster on her camera to keep the secrecy and anonymous. So now uh, you know. You yeah, only you only get guessing. to see it one way. It's no, it's okay. <laughs> Uh, it's good. It keeps that, that secrecy and an anonymous, uh, of who you are, which I like. So. Absolutely. But I'm also here to, you know, answer some questions and you get to know me a little bit more than just the yeah. brief sounds that I make <laughs> or just physical acting. <laughs> but for, for starters, I gotta, I gotta bring this up and I, and I was telling people all weekend last weekend when we were working Halloween Depot, you were probably one of the most talented people I've ever met in this business and there, and there's a lot of talented people out there but from from the level of 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 just work you've been putting in to to get the character noticed and get the character out there it is just a, a complete pleasure to watch and and to see you grow so i'm glad i get to be a part of it i'm glad i get to help out any way i can and it, and it's cool to just watch you grow so congratulations well, thank on you that so much <laughs> Thank you. That's, uh, your your kind words, you know, I really appreciate it. Hey, no problem. Everybody's been so good to me, you know, really encouraging and supportive. So yeah, it's definitely appreciated and helps me push myself to do more things. Yeah. Uh, I feel like we're just getting started, honestly. Just getting started. We're just getting started. By the way, uh, I, I hear you're almost to 3,000 followers on Instagram. I am. I am. 3, the goal, honestly, is to get there uh, right before September, before haunt season is really going. So that's why I brought that up, so we could plug it in. If you're not already following <laughs> Tricks the Trickster on Instagram, look up Tricks the Trickster. You'll find her and give her a follow. We're trying to hit that 300 mark before um, Halloween season haunt season so i'm excited for yeah, that thank you also uh we were selling merchandise all weekend so go ahead and check out her merch shop as well that's why i have this amazing hat which i believe is currently sold out it's right now. sold out it we did. are sold out um definitely looking to restock but i'm also looking at some new designs nice. but i know that everybody seems to like that classic pumpkin the pumpkin and, is, a, is um, a good a good twist on not only the the spirit of Halloween, but mixing it with your character to tell your story. Yes, so. yeah, and my website for the merchandise is uh, trixespumpkinparty dot com. That's so. It's a lot easier than my merch website. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Make hey. sure you check out his merchandise too, because he is doing some big things. Yeah, we got links in the description for everything below. So go check out uh, Trix's website as well as uh. Uh, the Boo Bros merch website and our merch website, which is slowly launching little by little, We're trying to get some designs yeah. up there. Um, really exciting. Should be good. I so, will. Oh, go, sorry. No, no, you're good. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll tell you a fun fact. So the reason why I called it Trix's Pumpkin Party is because my family, we always hosted a pumpkin party around nice. the holiday, you know, fall. Yeah. And we'd always like carve pumpkins and everything is just based on pumpkins. And so I thought it'd be only fitting to make my shop you know, Trix's pumpkin party. So it's, it's got a nice little twist to it because it has, you know, the uh, the legit side of it being more about Trix and your character, and then it's got the metaphorical side because it's something personal to you. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, my family, they, they play a big part in what I do. They've helped me so much. Right. Uh, actually, my, um, my parents, they helped me make my costume, and we kind of put it all together. Right. That's awesome. Well, I, I mean, you know, you even see my sister's been throwing some photography out there yeah. on my page. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and it, it all starts with the family. You know, the family supportive. You know, it makes your job a lot more easier, and and it, it makes you feel a little bit more comfortable. I mean, my my parents are super supportive of what I do here at Nights of Horror, and I thank them a hundred percent because you you can speak on this too. 
you know, going, you know, growing up in this industry, there's so many conventions, so many appearances, you know, for not only uh, content opportunities, but just appearance opportunities and whatnot. So there's going to be a lot of sacrifices on weekends, a lot of birthday parties missed, um, you know, personal events missed and stuff. And Mm -hmm. we do it because we just, we just love Halloween. We love what we do. And yeah, hopefully we can make it up to that person next time. (laughs) Yes. Definitely. I mean, it's it's definitely uh, sometimes challenging because it's not typical like nine to five job. Yeah. And you, you kind of you're working all the time yeah. and typically it's mostly the weekend. So you have to make adjustments. But, you know, if you really want it, you can make it happen. Oh, yeah. It, it's a lot of work, a lot of hard and hard and work put in. But in the end of the day, it's a lot of fun and oh, yeah. uh, the memories will last forever. So. So rewarding. So rewarding. Let's uh, let's jump into uh, the early life of Trix. Uh, growing up, you know, obviously someone something is influencing you to to really love Halloween, horror, all that fun stuff. What was the biggest influence on you growing up that that really got you out there to really like this holiday, this this kind of spirit, this lifestyle? Um, I guess it would be that that pumpkin party. I just. The decoration, that, that color scheme, it always made me happy. Yeah. And just the holiday itself, Halloween. Funny right. enough, though, I was a pretty scaredy cat growing up. <laughs> and when I would go for Halloween, see, so my grandpa would always decorate the house. And he even got featured in the Burbank newspaper for being nice. one of the scariest houses um, during that time. Right. And then, if you know, actually few years later my uncle got to do the same thing so it's kind of running in the family that's awesome keeps the keeps the family tradition going (laughs) exactly but so i was so scared to even go up to the house that my aunts would come over and like have to walk me and like shield my eyes and be like everybody stop (laughs) tricks is coming you know not tricks but yeah you get it (laughs) you get it yeah tricks is coming tricks is coming (laughs) don't scare tricks (laughs) yes and so it wasn't until, you know, a few more years later on where I was like, you know what, I'm going to be brave and then fully embrace it. And I it wasn't a scaredy cat anymore. And I just oh, loved it. Okay. Like yeah. I'd always scare in the yard, like the people passing by. And even if I didn't look that scary <laughs> when looking back at it now. <laughs> my I think my first like big introduction into the horror world was watching Freddy versus Jason. Oh, you have these two icons going head to head against each other. And it, I don't I don't remember why I liked the film so much. I just did. <laughs> it was just it was a fun film of, of just two killers, not only killing people throughout the whole film, but then hating each other and going after yeah. each other. So, yeah, that was that was the big biggest introduction I ever had to the horror world. I didn't go to my first haunt till 2008. Oh, wow. I went in I think 2012, 2012. So even later. <laughs> what was the uh, yeah. f- what was the first haunt you ever went to? The first haunt I went to was Halloween Horror Nights. Okay. And then Six Flags Fright Fest. Six Flags Fright Fest. Same year. Same year. Yeah, it was my first year of college, and that was, like, the thing to do. I'm like, sure, I'll check it out. I like Halloween. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Going into these events, uh, obviously now you've kind of – you're entering – you're exiting one world, exiting and entering another – what was were you nervous at all going to these events was it more of kind of like you didn't know what to expect uh what what was your nerves going up to that day um i think with the halloween horror nights i was pretty nervous because i didn't grow up watching horror movies right it wasn't until later in life where i was like oh i'll check it out and you know it was not bad i was sweating a lot when i watched (laughs) halloween the first time the suspense got me yeah (laughs) But now it's like one of the coziest movies that I just have to watch. <laughs> she's just, you know, she'll just get a cup of uh, cocoa and right in front of the fire yes. and throw on some Halloween during Christmas time. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I was, I was a little nervous. I didn't know what to expect. And like that was, I, I grew up going to theme parks, but never something like in that scale and all Halloween. Yeah. But when I went, it was so cool just to see the big sets and, I remember it was the year um, they had the Alice Cooper 3D maze. That was such a fun maze. Oh, my gosh. I I love, like, 3D and, like, UV light. So, for me, that was the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and I was like, I need to do something like this. <laughs> I don't know what it's going to be, but because I, I love art. But I'm like, oh, I, I love this. <laughs> yeah. 
And and then long behold, you discovered Six Flags Fright Fest. Yes. Yeah. I went I went maybe a couple weeks after and it's really crazy looking back because I remember seeing these clowns right. in in Gotham before it was called DC. I love Gotham. And I remember this like jail type clown in pink stripes just sliding all these concerts they're just causing mayhem and like going all over the place i'm like whoa like i've never seen anything like this and i remember taking a picture with that pink clown and it's so crazy because now i'm in that area and you know one of my good friends he's that pink clown right and so it's just you know unbelievable how everything works right i i've never even saw myself in this world like that's not not at all what i expected yeah uh so you go to Fry Fest, you see this pink clown, you're like, I want to do that. Uh, where do I sign up? Mm, not, not so yet. much. Not so much. It was more of like, I appreciate just, the just, event. Just I definitely want to go again. Yeah. Yeah. Because that year I had a pass. I had a pass to Six Flags. And so that was 2012. The next year, since I still had the pass, right. I got an email saying, if you'd like to audition for Fright Fest, please sign up. And I'm like, hmm. Why not? I've Why never not? done anything like that. I've, right. I've never done anything like I've never auditioned for anything. Yeah, I was pretty shy. I even like in school, I studied to be a teacher and we'd have to, you know, practice our lessons and get really nervous doing that. So right. this was pretty far out of my element to go and like act and do something. <laughs> <laughs> How funny to me. I You know, that's something I never knew about you. And, we, and we've talked so yeah. many times. Imagine like. <laughs> During the week, full time teacher, and then on the weekend, yes, for kids, elementary school yeah. too. Yeah, for elementary school kids too, for and then on the weekends, school. on the weekends, you're bringing nightmares to life. Yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. It was it was pretty wild, and I remember telling because I went with a couple of my other friends that are studying to be teachers too. We went to that event, right. and then the next year, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna audition for that thing that we went to last year. They're like, really? That's cool. <laughs> and then it just kind of like. Now, every year leading up to everything, they're like, oh, are you still doing that? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're like, I've been invested this long. I'm. It'd be yeah. damned to me if I backed out now. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it was it was so fun. I was so nervous for that audition. I was like one of the last people to go to. I had no idea. I was like, okay, we're going to do this. I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because you know, knowing you now, you just don't see that. You, you don't like you, when, once you get, you know, locked into character, it, it, it's like the person you are becomes the person you now are. And it's just it's nuts to me. It really is like <laughs> it, it's cool how you could just flip that switch real quick. But uh, thank you. Even in character, a lot of though, people say they're surprised that my voice like I get people that say that your voice is so sweet for <laughs> you're so scary. <laughs> Well, and then that, and that's another thing too about tricks that I like is is you kind of let the action speak louder than the words and and the and the character, which is a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Some of the, some of the most fun I had on Saturday was when uh, we'd have uh, a lot of the the uh, customers and guests come to the uh, table to go check out the table, and yeah. uh, you would be right next to me and I'd be explaining everything, but then you would just let the actions go while I was doing the talking, which was a lot of fun. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, it, it helps that you were doing the talking. <laughs> yeah, so you just had to be like, all right, that's me. I gotta, I gotta put on the actions, and boom, help sell. Yeah, help sell the product. That's a lot of fun. Um, I'm sure we'll get into it later, but you'll, you'll understand a little bit more why my actions are the way they are. Awesome. Uh, yes. So you went into that first audition. Uh, how did it go? It, it went, it went really good. I mean, I don't, I can't go too much into it. Right the because it changes every year yeah um and there's some connections which is really interesting like the concept that we had to do is pretend we were in an electric chair and getting electrocuted and so later on down the line i find myself on an electric table in one of my years so, <laughs> <laughs> so it came in handy it, it did yeah my yeah. first audition kind of set me up for it yeah and i just went full out and i, I ended up getting it that's awesome. My first year. <laughs> first year. So where where do they uh, land you in your in your uh, your debut year at Six Flags? 
Are you okay, in a maze? so my debut year was yes, it was a maze in 2013. I was the Black Widow spider in the Black Widow maze, which nice. is on Exile Hill. Okay. Um, it's below the Willoughby's maze. Awesome. That one has changed a couple times. Um, it's kind of crazy because my first year they said you're the Black Widow spider. You're gonna be in this little spot, and I had like this little cubby that right. probably just fit my shoulder width and it's just a curtain and me just by myself Oof. and i'm wearing this like thick latex mask that has like it's not actually fitted to my face so you're really hot you're sweating yeah all right well so i'm just gonna pop out like that's all i'm gonna <laughs> do and they're like yeah that's it that's and it. so i was doing that and like every night I'd bring something new, like in between scaring, I'd bring a fan to like fan myself underneath. <laughs> I'd bring my water bottle with my straw because I'm like, this is so hot. And I'm just trying to figure out, I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, I'm just popping out of here. But, and I truly was like, I don't know if I really like this because that's all I'm doing is just popping out. Right. It's not like universal where there's like some sort of like trigger switch or you know, there's some music playing right. that really gives it story. And so finally, my supervisors are like, I, you know what? I think you'll do better outside of this little cubby and be in the big room that was a part of that area. Right. It's just this big, like, spider web room. Um, I'm not a big fan of spiders. So thankfully, uh, they didn't have any. Like, I'm not really either. So I'm already hearing this maze idea. And I'm just like, I don't know if I did that one multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> It it was a cool maze though. Like yeah. it, it wasn't like a typical like spider. Right. Um, just like an interesting look. So I'm so happy they took me out of there because then that's where I started falling in love with the event. <laughs> because I could actually interact more with people. So was... they instead of having that mask, they did like um, you know, the airbrush paint. Oh, on I me. bet that was way more cooler. <laughs> oh yes, because I would glow, I'd look uh, there was a point where I even looked like Darth Maul at one point. That's awesome. And like they gave me these sticks that I would pretend I'd go to the floor and like crawl out. So I look like a spider. Right. And that was like where I got my first big scare. <laughs> You're like, hey, I kind of like this sliding stuff. Uh, sort of, yeah. It's starting to kind of sprinkle into yeah. the mix a little bit. Using my arms, using my legs. I would just crawl out, like just picture me like getting lower and like, just like tapping out. these yeah. sticks out. And one of my supervisors came by like, eh, it was probably mid season was watching me and I got my best scare right in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> so they were watching this lady came and she was just looking at me what I was going to do. And I started crawling out and she started running, but she was still looking at me because she didn't want me to follow her. Yeah. She literally ran into the wall. <laughs> she was so consumed with looking at me and just so scared. That's hilarious. <laughs> the supervisors right were like, good job. Okay, let me go get her. <laughs> let me make sure she's okay. She's not dead yeah. or anything, you know, so. I mean, it wasn't too hard, but yeah. it was definitely like abrupt when you're not paying attention. Yeah. And so then I'm like, I see this thing. I, I like this. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, so you get the obviously you get the promotion up to from small room to grand room. Uh, you yeah, have time of really your life makes in there. a difference. Yeah, time of your life. It's already a lot cooler for you because one, you're, you're, you no more mask. You're on to paint, so yes. you're not you're not as drenched in sweat as you were. Yes, and I I had the freedom to move move around and and kind of. Do Even more interact with a couple other like scare actors right. that would be nearby to sell the to sell the 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 story and the scene. Um, yeah. And so that was what that what year was that? Twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen. Yes, my first year. Um, yeah, I remember even experimenting with like contacts, right? And I just couldn't get those things in my eyes, like not even at all. <laughs> now going into that first year, was there a ton of research done? just to kind of start looking at like other like example contacts and stuff like looking at like merch or qu equipment to use to make it comfortable did you do a ton of research going in or you kind of just learned as you went not so much I just kind of felt it out and it was all just so new to me yeah. so I whatever they gave me or tell me I try to implement it or I try to try different things see what I like because I didn't want to be so repetitive right I think that's why it was so hard in the curtain but then again, you know, some people really like that. Yeah. And that's like 
good for them. And I think that's why it works because you get so many different people where they have their strengths. Yeah. Everybody, yeah, everyone differently, all the parks and stuff, they do their, they like to do their own things. You found your yeah. strengths and, and, and somewhat weaknesses. Although I like to say Trix doesn't have any weaknesses. So, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so the 2013 season comes to an end. I'm assuming it was yes. a, a great debut year for you. You had a lot of fun, and you just it couldn't was. wait to get back to it again. I made a lot of good friends. Um, I'm the kind of person that keeps in touch with everybody. So right. I still have one of my good – well, I still have a few of them, but one of my good friends, it's funny now, she messaged me recently and was like, wow, this is so amazing. Like, you, you were – I was with you in the beginning and now look what you're doing. Yeah. And so it was really like really nice to hear. Right. That, that's a lot of, yeah. that's always, a, that's always a good compliment because like it, it, it truly shows like people that were with you from the start and now they're yeah. watching you grow and then they're just kind of cheering you on, you know, that's always a lot of, a lot yeah. of fun, a lot of fun. It was really cool. And then, of course, I was like, "I'm sold. Got to do it again. Got to do it again. I'm coming back." <laughs> so, 2014 happens. What? Uh, what's What's new for for tricks? What happens that in 2014? 2014. So, I remember auditioning, and they were like, "We think you're gonna fit in the new maze." I'm like, "Cool. Awesome. I'm ready. Whatever you've got for me." Yeah. And so they put me in Vault 666. So the original one, the first time it was built. I'm well familiar with that one. Yeah, I I love that one. Right. Um, it definitely holds a special place in my heart. And so I was an animal experiment on an electric table. Nice. And so when I saw the electric table had all these cool lasers and it was like propped up that I could stand but lean on it. <gasps> I thought that's a good deal. I'm, you know, I'm, I kind of work with that. <laughs> kind of was like a, a little bit of a little Frankenstein's monster kind of action. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, it felt really classic, and I just really liked everything they put into the maze because right. from what I've seen before, I mean, not that I had much experience coming up to this, but they just had, like, animatronics and different special effects that I haven't seen. So I thought, that's so cool that I'm going to be in this maze, and it's the right. new one. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I mean, and and they obviously loved you enough to bring you back and, and have you open a brand-new maze, debuted yeah. at the event. Um, yeah, I thought that was cool. So what were some of the most uh, highlighted moments you remembered working that one? Um, I just really liked the, the makeup for that because it was an animal. Right. And I kind of, I would do my hair like a, I had a little pompadour on, oh, nice. like with my bangs right. and my, my hair. And so it's funny because a lot of my friends, they knew me like, oh, I want to see you without your pompadour. <laughs> the, the little poof. They call it the little poof. But right. it was perfect because they could make me into this cat and bring it into my hair. That's awesome. And like, I'd be like a lizard because I finally figured out how to use the contacts. Right. It'd take me a good, you know, like <laughs> minutes to put it in. A little but, minute, yeah. But the contacts were, they were one of those lengthy ones. So they look like, oh. you know, they could be a lizard or a cat. Yeah. I thought it was so fun seeing the makeup artists what they would do right and so at that time i was actually pondering being a makeup artist for fright fest i really like scaring but i every you when you do the maze stuff you get different artists every night right so i'd ask them questions and be like hey so how long have you been doing this how'd you get into it what's that and so i'd you know learn a little bit here and there and then i finally was like i'm kind of interested like how do i get involved and they said you have to make a portfolio I said, okay and then you know season comes to an end and I'm like wow I really like scaring <laughs> 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 and so they the following year I actually was able to be in vault 666 again nice back to back yeah I, I really liked it and I was I was open I'm like you know what this is a cool maze I don't mind yeah and so the second year was the year I got the most to scare in 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 like the entire maze i practically scared in every single room that's cool yeah it was a good system they they had us kind of like help each other on a break and you know put us back in our spot but also a nice change of scenery right nice little rotation yeah so i felt like i really knew that maze and i got to scare with so many different people and it, it was really nice now um, here's the ultimate yeah. question if they if they were to bring okay. that back tomorrow and they asked you to make a one-night appearance, would you do it? 
Oh yeah, on the electric table. Oh yeah, you're gonna you're gonna to, come back in. To. Hello, old friend. <laughs> Imagine if they had me as tricks on the electric table. I feel oh, like that would look so cool with it my would hair. Look dope. Yeah, it really dope. And they, and this room was also kind of small. Right. And so they it would often be, they'd either have just me in there, or they'd have like a doctor, like kind of like operating on me. Right. Or they'd have another person. So sometimes they get a little crowded where you almost have to like be careful because the energy is so high and you, you don't want to like collide into each other. Yeah. yeah. That's that. I mean, that's cool. I mean, that I, I've heard a lot of great things about this maze, especially the original. Oh, yeah. Um, Cause they've brought it back numerous times and, and changed yes. theming over, over the years. Right. Yeah. It's still the, the foundation is there. Right. There's still a lot of the, you know, I think freaky Freddy's still there. You'll know him. He, he's loud. <laughs> <laughs> you can't miss him. You can't, can't miss, miss him. him. <laughs> can't miss him. So yeah, 2014 happens. You, you return uh, obviously back to Volt. Wait, was it 2014? Yeah. 2014 and 2015. 2014 and 2015 is your years yes. in Volt 666. Let's yes. go to let's go to my graduating year, 2016. Okay, your graduating year. What uh, um, what's nice surprises do we have for 2016? For 2016, well, I, I have to pay homage to you know one of my friends. He unfortunately passed away um, oh. when I was in vault one of the last nights. Right. And, you know, we we all kind of had, you know, our special moment there. And right. for me, I couldn't go scare again in the same maze. Yeah. So I, it was also a good thing for me because then I'm like, you know what? Maybe if I am in another place, maybe two years is a good amount because I don't want to, you know, get too stuck in one place. Yeah. But if I really like it, I'll see. Yeah. yeah. So it definitely pushed me to, you know. Try to be somewhere new. Venture out. Yes. And so another new maze came around nice. where they're like, do you want to be in the same place or somewhere new? I'm like, please, somewhere new. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere new. That's awesome. And it was Aftermath 2. So awesome. It's not the original not Aftermath. Not the original, but it's a sequel. It is. And oh, it was so cool. The, the only outdoor maze that they have right now. <sighs> I bet that was nice and cool, by the way. Oh, so cool. I yeah. mean, just the landscaping, because I was in the area they called their scare zone. Right. So the big open area. And you get to see these huge buildings. There's a bunch of cars. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, that it, really it was cool. really cool. Um, I, I really liked Aftermath, too. I know a lot of people say, obviously, Aftermath 1 was better. but Aftermath I, 2 holds a special place in your heart, though. It has to because I was there. Yeah. It has to. It's part of your haunt <laughs> career, your history of, of, of the being at the event. So you have a long legacy to look yes. back at. Yeah. So. And so I was, we weren't zombies. We were infected. Oh. And so it kind of gives, you know, there's more interpretation you could do with that. Get more creative with it. Exactly. Yeah. And I thought it was cool just to see the storyline. You know, you go in the beginning of the maze, you've got more people then you start seeing the infection spread as the farther you get into the maze. Yep. So that by the end, you see these full on completely transformed different creatures. Like they had the nice immortal masks where they really didn't look like people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was those immortal masks for me. Like they trip me out because it's like, they're so realistic to the point where like that you can actually like move the mouth and, and really yeah. like, hit your own face. And it's, it's kind of Kind of scary, but it looks really, really badass, too. It does. And I thought it was so cool because this maze, they had sliders. Nice. They had stilt walkers in the maze, and they had this, like, scare zone. So they I had, kinda, like, a little bit of everything. Uh, 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 Mike, are we kind of hinting at where this is maybe leading to, potentially? That's not this year. So it's funny because every year I audition, I always put action goal slider right. or stilt walker. And I audition for it, and, you know, I'm like, I hope I get it. It's not... You know, I don't mind being in a maze. Right. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to do a maze again. But truly looking back, I felt like everything I did just prepared me for it. Right. And when your time comes, you just have to keep working. And patience. then you'll finally get your moment, you yes. know, to be a walk around. 100% agree. So I saw the sliders my first year in Aftermath too, Like where I was really like, they were in the same area. I was watching them pop out. I thought, that's cool. And so at the end of that year, I built my first slider gloves which are these giant clunky you can't really use them 
they are so thick. <laughs> right. And I had these combat boots that I, I thought were steel toe. They're not even steel toe. They're like <laughs> composite boots. Right. But I thought this is what I need. And then I need some knee pads. So I went to Walmart and like the skater section. I got some, you know, random knee pads. Cause I don't know. Right. I'm just like, I want to see like if I could do this after the season. And it's funny. I sent my friend a picture. I'm like, I'm going to see if I could do this next year and try. And me thinking I was sliding, I, I probably slid like <laughs> two, three feet. It was, it was nothing. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, you say nothing, but that was the birth of you starting yeah. something. It, it was. And I would, I showed my family, I'm like, this is, this is something that they do. Doesn't it look cool? And they're like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, not really knowing. Not really, yeah. They're like, yeah. Yeah. If it makes you happy, we're happy. Say, my my sister is my number one supporter. She's gone right. every year I've been scaring. Every year. That's awesome. My parents get more scared, so it wasn't until later on that they actually came out. Right. But she would come out every year. And so we it's funny that you see just we swipe through all our pictures and it's the same type of style where it looks like I'm trying to get her. Right. And she's like smiling like she's scared. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, and before so at the end of that year, no, how was it? Yeah, I, I made some slider gloves, quotes, air quotes. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you still have those same gloves today? I do. I do. I look back at them. They're still so clean, like, <laughs> and they're just so chunky. I'll have to show you one day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's good memorabilia to just have for memories, you know what I mean? Like, this is where it, is. This is where it birthed for me, you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah, kind of sacred. Yeah, because I got one of those, like, flint rods for camping that had the metal right it was like a small one and then i was like well how did they get it down like how did they make it smaller I'm like i don't know i'll just make it the platform bigger right and so i got this like sponge and i used gorilla glue for the metal puck piece i actually right. had the metal piece right that's the only thing i had right <laughs> and you just see all this like gorilla glue just like that's expanded out just everywhere right <laughs> Yeah, it sparked though. Hey, it sparked. That's all that mattered right there at the point. You know, you, if something caught your interest, you're like, that's what I want to do. I want to try to accomplish that. And in yeah. a way, in your way, you accomplished it. I, I did. So I, I tried it just a couple times. I mean, I didn't really do it that time period. So then when right. I came back and I auditioned again and I said, yeah, aftermath too. And they said, okay, we'll put you in there in the scare zone. Like you were doing good there. Like, great. That's cool. This time, they didn't make me a slider, but I was like, I see these people with these little loud finger gloves, the clacker gloves. Right. Like, I'm going to make some of those because I feel like I could do a little bit more with it. Right. And so I, I figured out how to make it. I actually had a friend who's an engineer, and he was helping me figure it out. I'm, like, cutting the pieces because I didn't have any of that, you know, like the grinder to cut right. metal. Yeah. Um, so it was nice. Like, he helped me out, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to try it. And that just changed my style of scaring. Right. And my supervisors noticed that. They're like, hmm, okay. Interesting. Like, they're watching. We, um, I think we had a slider and then another slider that left in, in September. Right. And so I mentioned, I went to the, my supervisor and I said, look, if you need another slider, I would love to. I know that there's, you know, you don't have any like female sliders. But I think I can do it. And he's like, okay. Like, I'll mention it to the higher ups and we'll see. We'll see if we need you. Right. And, you know, came back around that they're like, all right, we'll, we'll take a chance on you. We'll, you we'll teach you how up. to do it. <laughs> I got the thumbs up. Yeah. Got the thumbs up. So they, they showed me the gear and um, the Exile Brothers, both of them gave me my first lesson for nice. sliding. And I remember them saying, you just got a picture like you're going in for a plane landing. Yeah. That's how you want everything to go smoothly. Smoothly. Like, exactly. Easy enough. That, that sounds good. And so I was doing it and, you know, you kind of have to get your feel of it where you're trying to control your movements. <laughs> right. And so I, I learned and they finally put me like, they're like, okay, you could go scare. So by October I was, I was just sliding the whole time. Right. And I just, I loved it. Like, this was like the thing <laughs> that I've been missing to do. Yeah. And so I was just slide all over the, the maze in that scare zone area. And um, it was really cool because at the end of the year, uh, they usually do like an awards thing. Right. Yeah. Where, yeah. 
you know, like yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of haunts I know do they they award people like slider of the year and and yeah rookie of the year and stuff. Like, so yes, exactly, and yeah. they have like their uh, awards like for the veterinarian people that've been there right. for a long time. And I, I always look back to in aftermath too that I always enjoyed seeing that there were uh, older people who have retired that were scaring. Right. And they they love it, and I always told them like I admire that. I hope that. You know, when I'm that age, I'm still still doing, doing that too. Yeah. You know, if everything works out, and that's something I still want to do, so I yeah. thought that was cool. That's a lot of um, fun. And so during the awards, we were in makeup, and so I was geared up in my costume, and they were saying something. They're like, "Okay, we have an award. Um, this person has kind of took on a new, a new uh, part mid season." that we needed to have filled and really went um, something like did really well. Right. I don't remember the exact words. And for some reason in my head, I'm like, wait, are they talking about me? I don't know if they're talking <laughs> about me. I'm like, I don't think so. I mean, I, I'm still like, you know, new. <laughs> and <laughs> and then they're like, yeah, she's really been. And I'm like, she, okay. <laughs> well, we're getting somewhere. We're breaking down the clues. Doing really good. And she's been learning. And so they said, they said my name and they said they got a uh, scare of the year for oh, mazes. Wow. But to me, and I, I still have my really cool plaque. Um, I'll have to show it to you. Um, but I, I was just so, so happy to hear that. Just like after everything I've been working on and, you yeah. know, this is my fifth year being in the maze to be right. recognized. Oh, it meant, it meant everything to me because oh, I, I just bet. love it. Yeah. No, because that, yeah. that's, that's a big accomplishment right there. The, the fact that you were willing to step up when needed and, and you just wanted to give it a try and you went out there, you took the time to even train yourself mid-season, you know, and get trained and stuff, which was really cool. Um, yeah. So just to hear that story and then at the end of it all, for them to actually award you for doing that, you know, that that's – a huge yeah, step I'm in getting your career right there. Yeah, just, just thinking about it. it. Just reliving it, right? <laughs> yeah, I remember almost crying. And I was like, why am I crying? It's You know, it's, we only it's see each moment, other for yeah. a short amount of time, yeah. too. I make friends. We're all friends there. But I'm just like, oh, wow. Like, I don't know why I'm so emotional. But because I was just so happy that right. they finally saw what I was doing. And, and the fact that I was, you know, the first paid female slider at Six Flags. Yeah. You know, that comes with a lot <laughs> that's a that's a you just set the the right there at that moment you set the path for any woman who wanted to be a, a female yeah. slider at the event mm -hmm. that they look at you now and they go well she took the chance she did it i could do yeah, it too so cool absolutely i'll yeah. always say anybody can slide yeah anybody even this and big i guy. i yeah absolutely <laughs> I've seen, I've seen even, you know, like anybody could do it. Yeah. It's falling with style. <laughs> I'm just saying there might be something in the works that we've already talked about. So mm -hmm. we'll see if that, we'll see if we can get that going pretty soon. Maybe not this Halloween yes. season, but maybe yes. somewhere in the off season to keep me busy. Yes. I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, I really have, have to, a new oh. friend coming around. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely have to, you know, pay my respects. To that dude Blaze and Timothy Biscuits, they definitely, you know, kept giving me advice and teaching me and, you know, just encouraging me. Like, they're all, everybody there is just so supportive. Yeah, and that's how it should be, too. It's like everybody mm -hmm. should want to see everyone be better and, and do better and stuff and support, hype yeah. each other out. So that's a lot of fun. I mean, that's really cool. That's kind of, that's really cool. All the way, by the way, guys, I, I've known Trix for about a year, a year now, year almost a year and a half. Yeah. And a lot of the stuff that I'm learning and you're learning at the same time, it's a lot of my first time too. So it's it's really yeah. interesting to hear a lot of this stuff for me. Oh. But um I know you only know a little little pieces of I know. It now we're, now we're kind of uh, we're 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 uncovering the book a little bit more and yes. getting getting in deep into the chapters, but that's really cool. Yeah. I mean, that's what really kind of sparked it and so that season ends. Yes. That season ends, um, but right at the end of that season, there was actually a big event, the uh, Sliders, 
Spiders Unite at the Queen okay. Mary Dark Harbor. Yes, I've heard many tales about oh. this, and I never got to experience it, man. Amazing. I'm right. so happy that I, I went to that last one. And especially yeah. being a fresh new slider, yeah. like, that was so cool. I had to go because we had our Six Flags people. I had to yeah. support them. You, you know, support they supported them. me. I'm like, we got to go see this. I took my sister and her boyfriend and we, I was like, we're going to go see whatever this is, Yeah. you know? And I remember sliding with them a few times, like hearing what they're going to do. I'm like, that's cool. Yeah. And so that was like, I want to say it was either November, probably November, just the very end of the season. Right. So like that first weekend of November usually. Yeah. Right. So I went and watched it and I remember seeing like everybody from all over different parks sliding, doing your thing, and the announcer just saying their names as they came down. <laughs> yeah. I thought, that's so cool. And I, I just remember the name other than my Fright Fest people. Like, they're like, cilantro. Like, <laughs> what a name. Like, that's so cool. <laughs> cilantro. They, and there's meanings to all these names, yeah. man, you know? There are. Yeah. And I, that's where I truly started thinking about, hmm, what would they call me? If I were there, like, what would I want to be called? Right. And so that's where I really started thinking about, like, making my own character. Or at least thinking about that. And that's where the thought process came in. By the way, I, so, I, I'm getting goosebumps because it's starting to build up to something. <laughs> and I'm just like, yes, <laughs> it's like, oh, here we go. It's coming. <laughs> yeah. So 2017, it was just a, a big year over, overall for, like, my haunt career that just, like, put me in a, to jump ahead and do more things. Right. And it's funny, people that know me, they, the reason, um, so I would jot down names when I was thinking about like what they would call me. Right. Uh, they're all different variations of pumpkins and things like that. I can't say specifically cause it might give it away. Right. Um, but that's the birth of a YouTube channel I made. And <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's in a little in the past. If you want to be a detective and try to find it your own, we're not going to tell you. But yeah, <laughs> you can go detective mode on it if you want to. If you can figure it, out, find it out, and crack the code. Maybe, that's up to you, maybe. But, let's hope not. <laughs> let's hope not. <laughs> if you do, you do. That's fine. But yeah. I thought that's really funny that because of this show and thinking about a character name, it turned into that. And so I was like, okay. And I also, like, when I was thinking about it, I just would jot down things. I think about what scare zones are in Six Flags for Fright Fest. What do they have? Where where do they have sliders? So that it would make sense. Like, obviously, I want to slide again. Right. I want to do something that I like. And so that is kind of just, you know, rolling around in my head. And then so the following year, we, um, in between season, we're doing a lot of sliding here and there just to kind of get better. Yeah. And when I auditioned, um, they finally put me as a walk around on Exile Hill. There it is. Which is where I started. Yep. Yes. Came and full circle. It did. It yeah. really did. And I so they made me a slider walk around on that hill. That hill is so much fun to slide on. <laughs> so many good places. Um, the character, I don't know if I should say it because then it could be... How about you give some specific details that you remember the character, and then we'll just we'll let the fans figure it out. Okay. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, the style is very Victorian over there. Right. You could probably figure it out. I was the only girl slider. <laughs> <laughs> um, For all the diehard fans who were there that year. Uh, yes. You probably but, saw her. So, yeah. Um, the thought process, because originally they gave me a costume, and... I was thinking about it and I thought maybe they'd let me bring my own costume like from a thrift store or something. Right. I found something and uh, thankfully they approved it and they said, yeah, you could do that. And so this is like, you know, they gave me this area. They gave me like what the character I is. Mm -hmm. I just kind of made it a little more my own. Right. And um, the, the name of the character actually named after my grandma. Oh, so, that's sweet. Yeah. I mean, in a spooky way, but you yeah, know, it was a spooky yeah, yeah. area. Sweet and spooky, right there. Well, yeah. it's, you know, it's sweet because it's something personal to you, but then it's also, mm -hmm. you know, for anyone that doesn't, who doesn't know that, a variation of her name, not yeah. like exact name, but yeah, yeah. But it's a, it's 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 a good little tribute. Let's put it that. way. Yeah. Right? So yeah, obviously you could tell I'm a very sentimental person. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> thought to everything. <laughs> hey, we all are. 
Yes. Um, so yeah, that year we were doing a lot of sliding. Uh, my favorite part of being a walk around character is at the end of the night, the last hour, we'd always have the final scare. Okay. I don't know if you've been to that. I, I, you're going to hate me. I've never been to Fright Fest. <gasps> Oh, I'm I hope to, that changes. I'm this trying year. to change it this year. I really am. Okay, well, I'm giving you, I'm giving you the stories. Here I then, know, so. and, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm so mad that I wasn't there for any of them. <laughs> and now you're making me want to even more want to go this year to yes. go see it all. And of course, I will just say because this is my interpretation of working, you know, at Six Flags, and it's yeah. a wonderful. Everyone's is different, but this is your story. Different. This is my experience there, yes. and I love it, and yes. it's so fun. <laughs> yeah, no, I've I've heard a couple of people who work there; they just love the vibe, the community, and everything. Yeah. So. Oh, it's so great. Yeah. I mean, everybody, everybody's very welcoming. Yes. We'd all get together every Sunday night, and that's our that's our thing. There you go. We always tell new people like. You know, you got to go hang out with us after. Yeah, that, um, that's very that's very welcoming because a lot of new people, yeah. I think they feel so not only starstruck, but also kind of nervous that they just don't want to talk to anybody. Right. So the fact that you're, uh, yeah. you know, inviting them out to get to know them, they probably feel more more welcomed and stuff. Yeah, because that was the culture. When I went my first year, I remember hearing, oh, we do this thing yeah. and we go we go to this place and hang out. I'm like, OK. And then you, you find out, like, there's this ongoing game that goes on right. with these things. And I'm like, that's cool. Like, you know, everybody's, it's it's like a big summer camp. Yeah. You compare it to. And you get together and you, you get really close to get to see each other during that time and then have a little break and then come back again. Yeah. A lot of fun. Um, So I think for me, when I became a walk around, my favorite part was Final Scare because all the other walk arounds would go to the front in Demon's Door. Right. We all get to meet up and you get to scare with your friends. That's cool. And I was like, this is great. Because obviously, you know, you have a good time with your people in your area. Right. Then you get to see how everybody's night's going. You get to see everybody else scaring. Yeah. And Demon's Door is just, oh. It's, it's like, nice it's like one slick. big happy family reunion. It is. and But we're all scaring. So yeah. it's, it's fun. A lot of fun. The, the floor is so slick. It's like you're ice skating. Oh, dude. I, any slider... If you told any slider that, they would yeah. immediately fall in, he uh, in heaven at that place because yes. <laughs> that's always Between the biggest the thing. Between the hill and getting that momentum of going downhill, yeah, that's fun. And then you have the slickness over there. You know, you have to adjust a little bit because you, you get your bearings for, you have a little bit more like a rough ground, but you still have momentum carrying you. Right. But then you have this one where you're just sliding. So you, you have to like be ready to catch yourself. Right. A hundred percent agree. Um, it, it must have been fun going down the hills, but going up was not the fun part. <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually did some training before that year because I, I had a feeling they might have put me there. Because they asked, like, if I was interested in being in an area, where would I want to be? Right. Uh, Exile Hill. And so in case that happened, I, I played basketball. Uh, growing okay. up and I would do a lot of conditioning on the hills. I, I like doing that. Right. So I thought, you know, I better do some extra conditioning on the hill just on in case. Hill. And even I practiced sliding up and down a hill right. just because I have never felt what that felt like before. That's a lot of fun. Did you find a good area while practicing with a good enough smooth ground to, to kind of yeah. work, out, work uh, out? I mean, honestly, when you're going downhill, even if it's a little rough, it's going to carry you. Right. Yeah, that goes for yeah. I think that goes for anything vehicles, um, bikes, and all that. Everything. Yeah. yeah. When you go downhill, no matter how rough the thing is, it you're just gonna be going. It's still gonna carry you. So much speed. But definitely yeah. being able to practice going back up and climbing that hill, like it, it's definitely a workout. Yeah, but it's good conditioning because then you you already pre setting your mind. Okay, this is what it's gonna be most of the year. So what's the yeah. easiest way I can walk up the hill? You know, take my time. You mm -hmm. know, how do I approach going down it? You know, so. That's well, that's something I, I learned right away after right. my first year is like, whoa, you're doing a lot of cardio. <laughs> yeah. um, so I would make sure to do at least a little extra before. And I, anybody that would ask me like, oh, what would you recommend? I'm like, do some running, get yeah. your cardio in right before because it's all cardio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Uh, speaking of cardio, by the way, I got to add this real quick. One of my favorite things hearing is uh, and I don't know if you're a type of person that does it, but there's some people at haunts that will keep an eye out how many steps they do how many uh calories to do did you have did you ever do that and if you did what was your highest i did um i had an apple watch 
And when I did get one, even when I was in a maze, I would see how much I would burn and I would burn so much. Yeah. And, and I also, I love going to the theme park. So I know that you hit like, you know, those 20,000 steps. Yeah. And so to, to get that amount, maybe even more, I don't remember exactly. Right. But just that short amount of time that you're doing that, you're, you're burning a lot. It's just like, it doesn't even (laughs) matter what you eat at lunch because you're just going to go back out there and burn it off. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I try to be very healthy just because I know for me, if I were to eat something not healthy, I would right. not do well. <laughs> well, it's good because you like to get a lot of those natural nutritions into you, too, to keep you uh, energized for the night. So yes, helps a lot. Diet, people. If you want to do this, diet's another key thing. <laughs> yes, you know, healthy diet, eat your fruits and vegetables. It just it energizes you. <laughs> yeah, nice uh, little, nice, always drink a lot of water, stay hydrated. Lots of water, Lots electrolytes, of water. electrolytes everything, are important. all those things. I'm, I'm a smart yeah. water guy. What about you? Smart water, I mean, it doesn't, you know, I have tap water. Tap it's water. pretty open. I'm like, uh, I need my water. <laughs> I like to get the smart water because it's got the mixture of both not only water, but the electrolytes as well, so... Okay. It's I did a lot of things. Gatorade. Gatorade where I'd is mix, bomb. Mix it in with a, a large amount of water. Okay. Like you saw my that big water bottle I have. Yeah, yeah. I, I would always drink at least like two or three of those like during the night. Oh, and straight up just ready to go. I'm, I'm feeling yeah. yeah. A little a little Gatorade, but mostly water. Cause, yeah. You know, I always think about like all oh, the sugar and all that. Right. Um, <sighs> But so I, I guess at the end of the... 2018 we started doing these little like they weren't shows do these little like slider performances more like uh i like to use the term slider demo a little demo demo. we do little fun things not necessarily the scaring slides right and it was nice because all the sliders were there from the full night and so we do these little things and you know have a crowd watch us and it was really cool um, but that really set us up for the next year, as you will, as you all know. As you all know. <laughs> yeah, we had the Sliders of the Night. There it is. 2019, the first ever Slider show at Six Flags. That's awesome. So oh, you guys yeah. are pretty much responsible for kind of starting that up pretty much then, huh? Yeah, everybody, everybody worked so hard in putting it together. Right. I know... I mean, the Exile Brothers, they've been there the longest sliding, and that dude, Blaze. So, oh, and Timothy Biscuit. Uh, you know, they, that's why they taught me, because they were the ones that have been there the longest. Right. But I know they were definitely laying the foundation to get that really going. And finally, when we were doing these things and, you know, people would notice, we were able to have that happen in entertainment. It, it, it's funny how you sometimes take risks, and it ends up in the long term kind of benefiting you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... Yeah. I like that. So we and, and we would just get together and just slide. You know, like you know how you play horse and basketball? Yes. You do like trick shots. Yeah. We would just get together and do sliding. Or even like skate. We do different tricks and if you don't do it, you know, you get a letter. Now where was your uh did you did you hit up Chapman Park a lot? That's the famous one. No. No. Not that's a little far for us. Yeah. We have our we have our own little spot that we nice. would go to. That's good. Yeah, That's definitely more local yeah. for us. <laughs> it's like it's gonna be like Lords of Dogtown, locals only. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we definitely opened it up to yeah. to welcome anybody, but yeah, um, That's cool, just though. because of how the speed of everything was kind of happening and right. the anticipation for you know the show that was a possibility, we didn't know if it was, and we we got together anyways to have fun. Yeah, definitely. But it it we were we were going practically every week. Just going at it. Okay. And so. it was cool to finally have it happen. And that all, everyone that slid, everyone put their little, you know, their, their little thing into in the it, show. Yeah. It was a complete group effort. It was so cool. <laughs> that's what that's what you call right there, Frankenstein's monster. You put everything together and boom. Yeah. That's the result. And so uh, it, it was nice. Just like it was, we were all so proud of it. And that's awesome. that it finally could happen. And so, of course, 2019, that's the year that I was Trix the Trickster. The that first she came to be. year, 2019, Trix the Trickster, yes. man. The birth. But prior to Six Flags, my debut was actually at Midsummer Scream. Midsummer Scream. That's a lot of. Uh, I was there. I more than oh, likely well. saw you. <laughs> you probably saw me. Yeah. I more than <laughs> yeah, likely I saw you. the orange hair, the tutu. <laughs> yeah. That's such an iconic look. You can't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
but so that was that was like the start so i guess i should rewind a little bit about yeah. like the birth the tricks. yes the birth because we got in we got, i got so excited about no you're good <laughs> it's a lot of fun a lot to talk about yes yeah a shout out to all my sluders <laughs> i hope they check it out <laughs> oh, cool. i hope they're Come support, come support Trix, yes. Trickster. <laughs> um, I mean, I will say I couldn't be where I am without them. So I have, I have to give my respect where, you know, it's due. <laughs> yes, plug it in. Yes. Um, so pretty much January of 2019 was when my drawings, my original concept art was made of Trix the Trickster, what I wanted to, to be. And I, you know, I... I don't even think I've shown you the drawing. You still have it, huh? I of course. That's, yeah, a, that's, that's an important that's piece. That's going. Art. That's going in a museum one day. Yeah, eventually we'll probably be like, oh, like the fun fact of what kind of paper it's on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a. It's a fun piece of trivia because it's just like a spare paper I had. <laughs> right. You got. But I'll definitely have to show you. Yeah, I got to see that. I got to see that early concept. That'd be fun. Yeah, because I I drew a look and I drew like a face idea. Oh, now I feel like I'm backtracking, but the Halloween of 2018, I created a, a ringmaster character, right. a clown for Halloween. And there's a lot of similarities with tricks. Mm. That was the first time I really like put it to the test, like in real life form without knowing that's what I wanted to do. Right. It's like a version of a clown that I liked. Yeah. Like I've been a many different type of clown for Halloween or like version of the Joker, like the tourist Joker in an Yeah, uh, tourist Joker. <laughs> Are you talking tourist Joker from the Killing Joke? Yes, yes. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know my Joker, man. You can't there get you past go. me. I love the Joker. Yeah, I did the Heath Ledger Joker. Awesome. I've done, I've done actually every version of the Joker. I I'm a big Batman fan. Please like, tell me you have photos my of all favorite. those. I do. I will show you. I got to see some of those because that's You'll a lot see, of fun. And you can see this. It it was just, it's funny because everything was all there. Right. Like I, everything leading up to this, it's like in my subconscious or, you know, it just all kind of happened. Yeah. Where it made sense. So before we go any further with tricks, then would yes. you say that the Joker was kind of a, a big influence on, on big influence. creating the character? Oh, yeah. Completely. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, I wanted to incorporate pumpkins because I love pumpkins right. and Halloween. But, like, that crazy clown, like, yeah, yeah the Joker is just a good Iconic. character. Yeah, he, he's one of the most well-known villains in all of comic history. Um, yeah. What is I watched you... the animated series, oh, all God. those different ones. I'm glad yeah. you said that. that Even just... the, like, the jester-type Joker when he had the hair, the Batman right. animated one. Like, oh, so good. Um, what has, who has been, whether it's been voice or actor, what's been I your think favorite it's more adaptation? Visually, 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 like it's what got me. Cause I'm a, I'm not so much like a movie buff or right. like know my actors, actresses. Right. Um, it's definitely more of like, well, Heath Ledger just like really got me. Like the way he did the Joker. I, yeah. I, amazing. Yeah. And you know, Absolutely what's funny amazing. is it, much like Jack Nicholson, no one, yes. get, no one told him that he'd be able to do that role. Yeah. And the guy, rest in peace, passed away yeah. doing that role, and mm -hmm. and and rightfully deserved the Academy Award for oh, best supporting yeah. actor in a film. I mean, that's just such amazing, such outstanding work. Like, because a lot of the times it had you questioning, like, is he when he tell his stories about his dad and stuff? Like, he had different stories and stuff. So a lot of time you were questioning. Yeah is this real or is he just trying to get a, a reaction out of people? So exactly. Yeah. He, yeah. It, I, it was so cool. He's a great actor, man. Rest in peace to Heath Ledger. Love that yes. guy. Yes. Um, my, my uncle is a special effects makeup artist professional. Nice. And I actually asked him, I was like, do you think you can turn me into the Joker, please? <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. And we That's did, cool. you know, like a, a female version of the Joker. That's cool. I remember own... getting like a purple card again and like just pinning like Joker cards to it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Just to get your yeah. own kind of spin on the Joker. I love the Joker, yeah. man. A Joker, I mean, and that's the fun part about the Joker is you can play him so many different ways because there's been so many adaptations of the Joker. Yes. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, and the outfits, the color scheme, yeah. I love it. Attitude, the way he acts and stuff. It, mm-hmm. It's it's really cool. I've seen so many, and not only what you see on animation and film, but you see it in comics too. Just the different yeah. looks and adaptations, and a futuristic Joker, um, mm-hmm. uh, a current time Joker, an Elseworld Joker. You know, I'm I'm a huge fan of yeah. the whole multiverse stuff. So to kind of see all these. One of my favorite um, photos of the Joker, you should, if you ever get a chance to look it up, you might have seen it, but it's an Alex Ross post, uh, poster that he did um, for the iconic comic book cover of the debut of Harley Quinn. And oh. it's the Joker wearing, I actually have it hanging right here, but it's the oh. Joker, uh, he's wearing a nice black and white suit. And oh, yes. She's in her jester outfit and she's kind of leaning up yes. like that and he's kind of just smiling. That yeah, is that's, I, that one's amazing. That's one of my favorite, and, and I, I, I love. And see, this is what I talk about. We were gonna get off topic. I knew we were, but it's oh, all related. I mean, to, it's all related. Yeah, anyway. it's all related to the thing. But I, I am a huge Alex Ross fan, and the way he draws his characters is just so iconic. But the way he draws the Joker in specific is just so yeah. freaky and creepy that I, I am so good. Always blown away every time that guy does any piece of artwork. Yeah. Um, I love the Joker. Joker's and great. it's not to say I definitely got into Harley Quinn much later. Right. I think Joker was like the childhood, you know, the Batman. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Because Harley and Quinn didn't I, make her first appearance until the animated series, so. Right. And so, of course, Harley Quinn played a, a big role in, you know, inspiration with my character, right. too. Just the way, you know, the jester and how she's, you know, just, she gets so crazy sometimes. Yes. And, <laughs> I actually always yeah. joke around uh, when you bring out the mallet, and yeah. the first thing I do is say uh, that reminds me so much of Harley Quinn, or I'll do a Harley yes. Quinn um, impersonation with a quote or something. <laughs> so. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, she she's an amazing character. Long story um, short, audience, we're we're both nerds, so you know. Yeah, basically. That's, that's what we do. Big DC fan over yeah. here. <laughs> Obviously, and you work at the park too, where they have. I know it's so stuff. cool. So. I love seeing the super. You know, we got Wonder Woman, we got Supergirl, yeah. we got Green Lantern, the Flash, Flash yeah. Batman, Superman, and then you have them all in one. Catwoman, the, the Hall of Justice. You know what I mean? Oh, the Hall. Of, that's my favorite ride there. It, I, like, because the, of <laughs> you see the Joker and all the characters. <laughs> it's it's one of the only rides I fit on there. And I'm happy. It's to, the only dark ride. I, I'm the, I'm happy to fit on it because I fell in love with that ride. That's good. <laughs> yes, it's like one of my favorite. Like I remember walking in this. I'm like, I'm in the Hall of Justice right now. Oh my god, yeah. this is like a, I've never thought in my life. And yes, it's such they did an amazing oh, job. Oh, so on it, cool! Right? The marble statues yeah, of oh, the heroes. I wanted to legit steal those and take those home. <laughs> I know. I wish you could have one in like your garden. <laughs> yeah, just kind of oh, perfect. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. And the garden would look beautiful. Mm-hmm. Just have like. Well, a, we even have the Joker. He does come out every so often. Yes, I, I, and it's funny you bring up the 2019 season. We're to, we're gonna get to more right now, but um, yes, everything that, leads up into it. Yeah, my my that was actually I I remember that's what really turned me on to the event that I really wanted to go because that year, uh, oh no, actually let's let's step no, back a few I think years. It was er, Suicide it was Squad. A couple years back. Was yes, that 20, Suicide Squad. 2016, I believe. 2017. I want to say 2016. I think. Yeah, that's when the movie came out. Uh, when mm-hmm. they did, that's what really turned me on to the event was when they had that opening of everyone coming out to Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. See, I never got to see that because I was, you yeah, know, I was getting the, ready. In the, yeah. But um, that was I, I such, heard it was cool. It, it was so, it looks cool because they even had characters from Suicide Squad come out and they did they had photo those, ops. Those blobs. I yeah. don't know what even the characters were. Oh, the Killer one with Croc all the eyes and, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it had Harley Quinn and the Joker. Yeah, that was so really cool. cool. So that's what really actually turned me on to the event at first. I'm like, they're incorporating DC at their haunt. Like, yeah. sign me up. Where do I go see this at? You know? Yeah. So that, that was Funny a lot of you fun. didn't go. I know. I wanted to go. <laughs> I think I was still in high school at the point. So, no, no, okay. I, was out of, I was out of high school. I would have been out of high school already. What was I? Hmm. I, I, was, I think I was working knots. I used to work at knots. Fun fact, oh, if you didn't know. I used to work okay. at Knott's. There, there's a fun fact. Not not, not for Scary Farm. I was just what I am today, a, a custodian. A lot of fun, though. There you go. Theme park. You know, the theme park world is a lot of fun. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. So I, I actually am. That's, that's the area I work in. <laughs> there you go. Um, 
So 2019, Midsummer Scream. We yes. de- we debut okay. tricks. Yeah, well, now you just made me remember something I was going to say. So before Trix, so at the very end of 2018, um, after that year, I thought, ooh, it would be cool to do their Holiday in the Park event. Right. And so I, I went and I did auditioned and I, I got a role. Mostly it wasn't an entertainment role. Like they'd switch every so often. Right. But towards the very end, they made me um, uh, this character. Uh, I can see it's funny. I can't say these names because I feel like, you know, people are going to go search it up. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> so you were just, a, you were a, one of the characters of the holiday. I was one of the characters. And so I, I kind of made the decision to go like full force into entertainment. Right. Like I got my teaching done and everything. And I just, it wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do. And I also had my art minor as well. Right. So it was definitely on the creative path, but I just didn't feel like, that was the right time for me to do it. And so I went into entertainment and then I auditioned and I actually became friends with a few Looney Tunes. Nice. Over time. Yes. And so I really think that because of all those things that I did when I went full force in entertainment, right. it really helped me be able to have more like uh, character development, what you see now with tricks. Yeah. And because your the way you perform is all like body language right i think that's why it came so easy for me to do that with tricks and just make these few sounds because i mean it also makes you question like a little bit like hmm, that's interesting way to communicate yeah it's also something i'm just more used to i guess in a way (laughs) it's your own style and and it's funny because it's funny you bring up sounds for communication I, i actually knew one a uh, couple that works at Not Scary Farm, whose names I will not say, uh, for secrecy, but uh, yeah. they they had this way they played chickens on Ghost Town, and okay. they had this way of communication where they would actually cluck at each other, and they knew oh. exactly what they were saying, and they wow. would uh, like follow each other and everything. It was their own personal way of communication out in ghost town so i thought it, i thought that was always that's interesting. that's really cool yeah like they, yeah, they figured out a way to kind of language mix, yeah they kind of mix like english with clucking and they huh. kind of they kind of figured it out which i was like that is that's really interesting like i creative. would i would be so stupid i would not understand it'd be like what would what, you say <laughs> like i can't yeah what? repeat it <laughs> yeah but that yeah i mean so like when i when i hear you kind of come up with your own language and and kind of something that is is better for you in your case, it's a lot of uh, more actions rather than words. Yeah. Um, I, I always look at that as, as a lot of talent because you took the time to come up with that and you took the time to really kind of revolutionize it over the years. So it's a lot of cool. Thank you. Yeah. I see, I guess, I mean, it's just, it was more natural to do that than, yeah. than like talk. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> in a way. <laughs> Of course, sometimes I find myself where I'm like, you know, well, actually, no, more so just after when I'm out of character, if I'm talking. <laughs> just like it's. A, I, I, I think I communicate with my body language, even when I was selling the stuff. Like I was just like, look at my stuff with yeah. my arms. <laughs> yeah, no, and it, but it works with you. You know what I mean? Like it, it's it's a good mixture. And like I said, I was doing all the talking while you were kind of presenting it, so it yeah. was like. They were hearing my words, but they were more focused on you as you were kind of showing it off. So it was really cool. Yeah. And it's really crazy um, because one of the other Horrorville events, they had the um, art, the terrifier. Right. Like the actual guy that played the clown. What's his name? David, um, David Howard Thorne, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He was there. And so I've actually never seen that movie before that point. Right. And I figured that since he's coming, I should watch the movie. Right. And I found like it was so interesting because he didn't talk and yeah. like he did all this like physical acting. Like that's so weird. Like I've never seen this movie before. Are you guys you guys are probably related in another universe? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's really funny because I heard on one uh diff- on the Grim Life Collective their video. Right. They were talking to him and he said that he actually studied to be a teacher too. And Ended up doing this, so it's really, really. You got a doppelganger. I'm not. You're not telling me about or something in another universe, know. multiverse kind of thing. I going thought on. that was so cool, and I definitely reached out to him after, and I said, you know, I find so many like similarities with that. I, I think it's amazing. 
That's that's a you know that makes me laugh because before that you didn't really know who he was. You didn't know who the film was. No. And, and I just, you know, out of respect for him coming, I figured, oh, I got to see this movie. This film, it was a movie man. I wanted to see anyways. Right. Man, oh. how cool would it be? Just think about this. You know, Terrifier 2, I already know, is is done with production and stuff. But if they were to do a Terrifier 3. Oh. And a new character were to oh, approach the arena. See where you're going there. As like a, <laughs> as like a, a kind of up and coming protege mm. for art. That would be very cool. That would be a I lot of fun. I don't think Trix is as gory either. <laughs> <laughs> I think Trix would would be more, in my opinion, I think she would be the distraction for the kill. Yes. She's got that yeah. kind of like, that, like kind of like that show, like yes. performer kind of vibe to her. Where exactly. She was like, you know, it'd be performer, a scary jester, yeah. entertainer. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And there it, it is. It's got that vibe where it's like it's very. You can't take your eyes off it. It, it is creepy, but at the same time, it it's interesting. And then boom, Art comes in and chops some guy's head off. <laughs> Not possibly, and then and then she'll just make the head into a pumpkin because that's all she I, cares about. And you know jack o' lanterns, pumpkin. Doesn't matter if it's there are no pumpkins. She'll find a way to make a jack o' lantern. That would be hey. I'm just saying, terrifier people. If you're listening to this podcast, there you go. <laughs> I mean, we just gave you a good million dollar idea right there. You know, <laughs> that'd be a lot of fun. All I ask is for is if 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 I if if she's gonna be in the film, I I have to be the person's head. She turns into a pumpkin. Yeah, that that's perfect. That's the only way. It's the only way to do it. You know, <laughs> uh, exactly. <laughs> so I mean, I, but I find that that's really cool. Like you got to meet him, and then you 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 started seeing a lot of similarities to the character, which yeah. is like not even on purpose it was just something i mean where it he's was like, just so talented with yeah. the way that he's acting and that smile you know that he does yeah it's so creepy and so funny at the same time it's so unexpected you don't you know what he's gonna do but you don't know right exactly yeah that that was one of the movies i watched earlier this year too just to kind of like oh you know what i've heard a lot of things about it i'm hearing hype about the sequel like let me give it a watch and i remember just watching it and like at the end of the movie i'm like what the hell did I just watch? Like, yes, it was so good, but it was like, <laughs> this is by far like I, I could see why this got such a big following. Like, this is an <laughs> interesting, like the way he works and kills people. It's like, but yeah. he's so he's so secretive, and you don't yeah. know really anything about the guy other than he's got a trash bag full of goodies and mm-hmm. he's gonna use whatever his art. And he uses any weapon, guns, anything. Anything. It's, yeah, it's so interesting. So, and again with tricks, she has a variety of weapons. Oh yes, so, and I make all my props. So that's yes, all custom made. Fun fact, all, also, all tricksified. <laughs> she also makes a lot of her merch too. All of your merch, yes, really, huh? I I designed all the the designs on there. I'm just saying. Now you in. understand that that's from the art background. Plugging in the merch right there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, but that's that's cool. So Halloween Depot, you got the you know you got to see that. Um, yeah. Where were we? Back at we we were at twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen, the early birth of tricks, the birth and of tricks, and the inspiration. It, it just it, there were certain things you had to know with how the character developed, and right. Honestly, my character development has really just like changed from popping out of a curtain, like really one dimensional, to now I'm just like explosive, like sliding and yeah. different movement. Yeah. And I I loved. Oh my gosh, twenty nineteen was so much fun. Because I was a clown, you know, clown jester. It goes right. either way. They're all the same entertainment, you know. Now, <laughs> you're still you're doing the same thing. From the first time you debuted the character till now, uh, how much would you say the character has changed overall, look wise? Look wise, she's changed. Yeah, um, she's evolved, and it's still like the basic foundation is there. Right. Of even in my concept art. Right. You know, even when you look back, what Walt Disney was drawing of Mickey. Even his different name, it wasn't gonna. It was gonna be Mortimer. Yeah. Thank goodness for his wife. It's like, no, that's not. That's not a good name. <laughs> Doesn't roll off the tongue quite well. <laughs> yeah. So you know, everything does change and develop. Right. And now, you know, I'm just very excited that I mean, we're we're fast forwarding a little bit, but now I'm just you know, I'm almost a, a one woman show doing everything. I do my own makeup. I do you know the removal process, everything, hair, makeup, all of it. <laughs> We always hear the stories too. I, I I've always been fascinated. Tell, let people know, uh, because I, I I've heard the story many times, and we'll, and we'll get back to the 2019 right now. But yes, <laughs> how long it takes 
when you first started to put on the makeup till now where you got it down to that always impresses me oh my goodness <laughs> oh it took me it took me like three four hours in the very beginning the very first time I decided to just go for it and do it well okay well now I'm just remembering things but <laughs> I would do my makeup when I didn't have a prosthetic so it's familiar with it. Right. It's not too different from other clown types I've done. Yeah. But on a prosthetic, it's just so different. It's definitely more time consuming. It's almost like there's this like, you know, chemistry behind it that you learn. You have to prep the prosthetic before so that your stuff, the makeup doesn't soak into it. Right. I had no idea. Even with my brief trying to talk to these makeup artists, I never learned about the prosthetics. Right. I only learned like, when I was helping my uncle, we would make some uh, foam prosthetics for some shows at um, Disneyland. Right. And, you know, I kind of learned, but it's not like I got a full tutorial. If you just like say something, I'm like, oh, okay. You know, try to remember it. And I have uh, one of my really good friends, um, Antonina. She's an amazing makeup artist. Right. She was actually the one that did my makeup for on Exile Hill. Nice. And she has grown the same amount that I've been at Fright Fest. She's been there the same exact amount of time. Started with the maze, the airbrush, and worked her way up using prosthetics. And so she's actually someone I really went to. And when I was more so pursuing um, special effects makeup, like on my own, trying to do that as for work. Right. Um, and she would give me a lot of pointers. And, you know, ultimately it turned into that I love being a scare actress more than I do the makeup. Yeah, I do love doing the makeup and I will do it for Halloween because I do a different thing every year. Right. But uh, there's just something about it that's scaring. It's just so much fun. It. it but she, she, oh, yeah, I had just, to go to her and I was like, how do I do this? <laughs> just watching scaring and just just being the guest point of view on that. It's so much fun. I can only imagine what it's like doing it. Um, oh, yeah. It's so when you get someone so scared. But also, you know, you're not like I try not to be too mean with like kids. Like if they're really and scared, I was like that when I was younger. This last weekend <laughs> was a great example. Uh, she Trix does an amazing job when it comes to communicating with kids. Um, she's really nice and out there with them. Um, with of course these type of events, and I like that. It's I like also seeing a that. different type of event. Yeah, you know, being at a, a yeah, it's different from pop up. Yeah, doing the actual scaring. haunt. Yeah and stuff yeah where, where the haunt obviously is i've meant had to, to be tone scared. it back yeah. a lot <laughs> yeah but it's it is cool to see that you, you uh you did take that into consideration for these type of events like halloween depot and stuff where you know there's going to be kids and stuff so you're like okay i can work with this i know how to work around this and stuff I, and i've seen it and she does an amazing job doing it so oh thank you i i just i mean it's fun performing too so because i you know as a jester and i get to do these like performances too i think that right. was, is also a good way for me to switch that oh you know she's kind of funny or what is she doing that's that's interesting not just scaring yeah because i i try to be conscious like i don't want to really scare like kids like they're just like completely just not having a good time right yeah but of course you know it Every scare actor will say, if you see some people that are really scared, you just definitely want to go, go after it. them. <laughs> yep, it's just it right there. And and you know what's funny too is, uh, it, it it makes my it, it makes my my heart warm when you see, especially at an event like Halloween Depot where we go, we have families that come up. Uh, a lot of the times you got to, and it's always one of these things where they're going to be the next generation of potential haunters or even yeah. people that go to the haunts. And oh, yeah. It, for them to get established at a young age and, and 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 meet you as a character, they're going to remember that probably for the rest of their lives. Like, they're going to remember when they were little. Like, I remember this. For them, it's going to be this tall, orange-haired lady. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> exactly. They don't know how to really pronounce that. That's all. Yeah. They're just going to see the orange. tall. Orange. Just see orange. Orange. Scary orange. Yep. <laughs> but uh, it, that's the memories, the early pumpkin. memories. Yeah, pumpkin. <laughs> exactly. That's going to be the early memories they have of – scare actors and and the horror community and stuff yeah. that, you know being raised into that community so it, it's little interactions it's so that you, see, you know see. yeah um fun. make we we went on a tangent from makeup we did 
We did. And that's but, the fun part. Yeah. We get to go on little tangents every now and then. But yeah, makeup. Yeah. So you originally. The makeup. Originally two to three hours. took me like, no, like three, four hours. Three, four hours. <laughs> three, four hours. That's not even including my hair. I Oof. really took me a long time to get that makeup stuff down. Right. I just, I, I think once you get used to it, then you, you know what you're doing. And so um, now I have it down to about two hours, hair, makeup, full costume. Okay. Which is good. Yeah. But I still feel like I could be faster. I, whenever I'm doing my makeup, I always feel like, oh my gosh, hurry up, hurry up. I got to go. I got to go. Yeah. <laughs> Just your, your mind's already on going 100 miles an hour when you're like, yes, oh, I still got there's some time. so much planning for it. Um, but I do pre-paint my prosthetics because that saves me a lot of time. Right. And it's also easier rather than trying to have my hand on my face that looking into the mirror. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to get you, I'm trying to get them, them tricks colors. There, we there go. you go. Orange. Ooh, we got some orange. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it took here. some getting used to and some practice, but I guess because I would do like my Halloween costumes, it, it wasn't too different. Right. Um, so going back to 2019 tricks right before that Fright Fest season, I actually had the opportunity to be on, um, Freeform for one of their special Halloween events. Nice. Yes. Um, uh, one of my good friends, she knew someone and what saw what I was doing. I remember just mentioning it to her. Like, this is what I'm, you know, doing. I did Midsummer Scream already. And she said, if you want, like, there's a costume contest. You you should totally do it. Right. Like, yeah, that would be great. Oh, like, yeah. It's going to be on TV. <laughs> yep. And that's really, you'll see, that's like really early tricks days. Early where tricks. No prosthetic. <laughs> no prosthetic. <laughs> Wow, it was I all looked just, really, just makeup, really huh? young, yeah. <laughs> like like a baby version of Tricks compared to the prosthetic version. <laughs> it's the birth of Tricks right there. Yeah, but I just felt like I have to make it happen if yeah. I want to be able to do things. And it's okay that I didn't have a prosthetic, but at least I could still do this. And right. I even I met some incredible people there that are amazingly talented. I met a guy from Knotts. Um, who is a, a stilt walker. He was this big demon and so cool. Okay. There's um one one lady that she was one of the sisters from Hocus Pocus. Oh. Yes. There there were a, quite a few of those, but she somehow oh, I think we were just in the same area during the tapings and we were talking, we got really close and she was actually the very first uh person to buy from my merchandise when i put the That's my website awesome. out there yeah and, and we've we've kept in contact but it is just you really never know who you're gonna meet and exactly and that's those that's the fun part about this community is you, you get to meet and expand your family so yeah they're so nice everybody is just so nice i mean we met so many great people this last weekend you know just oh, coming yeah. up and that's of one of my favorite parts about it right um so yeah, I did the free form taping the contest right before. I I think I was like one of the last people that they had come back come in for that taping. So right. I wasn't able to be a part of the contest unless something happened and you know, I was the next in line, but that didn't happen. So they kept sticking me in, you know, wherever they were filming. So I got to meet like Vanessa Hudgens, That's cool. Jordan Fisher. Nice. Um Oh, Billy from Hocus Pocus. He was there. Okay. And, um, oh, for some reason, you, the guy uh, who says Hollywood. I forget his name. He he was one of the, the bullies in the graveyard. In, in Hocus the Pocus? Team. In Hocus Pocus. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Met him. I, I, I took a video with him saying that. Cause I, so at that point, I was still trying to figure out, I'm like, do I talk? Do I not talk? I don't talk. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I need to. I need to make this video because this is so cool. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was like me when I met Grant Kramer. The first thing I had to tell him was, I needed to hear you say another door because yeah, that's iconic. Another to door. It. Yeah, it's iconic. And you cannot not ask him to say it. And he, before yes. I can even finish that sentence, he knew where I was going and just said it. <laughs> and I that's was just, awesome. I was so starstruck. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's and I, I, when I met Vanessa Hudgens, because my sister was a big fan, I was like, I need to take a picture with her. I got to find her. 
And I just remember her being like, wow, you're really creepy. Like, your teeth are really scary. <laughs> Be like, this ain't high school musical anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. But you, if you look back, I think it's still there. You just see me, like, making my sparks in the background as she's That's talking. Fine. And it was really fun because my really close group of friends, we were watching it together when it came out. And uh, Jordan Fisher said something like, sharpen your pitchforks. And they would just be like, she's sharpening her pitchforks. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Man, that's yeah, so cool. So that, <laughs> that, got you some good, that got you some good a little public exposure right there. Then. That was pretty cool. Yeah, it was it was great. I yeah. mean, I, I had no idea what to expect. I was just there for the experience and thankful to be there. And I find out later going to the Halloween Depot that um, Bumpy the Clown, Chef Boyardee, right. he actually saw me in that. And he told me, and I'm like, that's really just so crazy to right. hear, you know, all these connections. Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, that, like I said, you're still, and you're, you're growing fast, but people will probably yeah. even recognize you from that back in the day. Like, hey, I remember yes. seeing you in, in this. You look obviously yes. familiar, you know? The, the little slider you saw, he, he watched it. He, he, he saw it. He let me know. <laughs> That's so cool. That is a Their lot family of, is very supportive. <laughs> a lot of fun. Um, so that, it was cool to have that kind of come that, out, like, my first year of scanning. Yeah. Really got established, too, you know? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and that season was just, it was just so much fun. I, 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 I don't know. I just love being able to be my character that I finally, you know, after all this time, staring at six flags and was to be a character i created and like this is all me my costume it's me my hair is me yeah you know just a lot so of fun it was, just, it was a lot of fun yeah that's cool um and then so after 2019 uh did a few different events you know we acknowledge the past it is what it was and then you know we move on and we have the pandemic come up yes. and that was uh really interesting <laughs> that's when uh you and i really started uh, chatting more we used to just we would we'd throw ideas at each other and just kind of just get each other through the pandemic yeah pretty yeah. much just here and there and i wasn't really like seeing too many people during that time so right. I, I felt like it was nice to actually you know have that communication and get to know people more yeah during that time yeah if any time it would have been to do that it was that during the start of the pandemic man yeah that's awesome. Yeah, there, there was a lot. I'm, you know, everybody, everybody had something. I'm sure during the pandemic, and you right. know, here we're all, we're all out. Well, you know, we're still going through it, but at least we're we in a better place. The toughest point. We're in a better place. Yeah. And we've all gone through our challenges to grow, and we all kind of probably figured out something that we were gonna do. Right. And thank goodness, because I had the time to, to really launch my merchandise and get everything going yeah i i'm lucky enough to have snagged one of these sold out hats uh merch yes like, merch like in bio <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no it, it was really cool because uh you and i we have some um some what's the word i'm looking for mutual acquaintances and that is yeah our friends from the Queen Mary Slider team, and that's when me and you really started. When we, yeah. when, we when we got back into in person, that's when it we started cool talking to really get to know you more. Yeah. And now that we're here doing this podcast, like your podcasts are awesome. Thank so you. So make sure you listen to all of them. <laughs> that's coming a lot from Trickster Trickster, man. You know, I. Let's just I, put it I this see. way: this podcast that we're doing right now has been one year in the making. Uh, it's just a matter of. Us yes, trying to establish really everything has. and and just kind of uh, just getting my bearings getting too, and even what I yeah. want to do. And I always told Trix every anytime she's ready, the podcast is yes. here. And and Sunday she surprised me saying, "I think I want to do it this week." And I was like, "Yeah, I think I'm I want to like, do it too. Do it. I'm ready. Let's, let's jump go. in. It's uh, time to do it." And now the 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 whole world. Most of the world, mostly Southern California. Yeah, we've got a big following. <laughs> we got a big following. Got a big yeah. following <laughs> on coast to coast. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. But uh, the world now will know the the story of of you rising from the grave to where you are now. Yes. <laughs> that's yeah. a good. That's a good little pun game, right? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. That's fun though. I mean, I I have been enjoying... probably why my hair is standing up because it got electrocuted. <laughs> exactly. There it is. 
<laughs> I, I've enjoyed watching everything that you've done thus far, especially uh, when we first started really talking again with, of course, uh, a lot of the Street Food Tuesday events uh, yes. with the Queen Mary Ciders. Oh, my goodness. Um, and I, yeah. and from what I remember, you've been a part of now. Has it been two you've been a part of? I've been a part of two. Yeah. Yes. It was the um, uh, St. Patrick's, St. Patrick's Day, Day and then the Purge. And the Purge. Yes. Yeah. Oh, honestly, these, I, you know, the, the Halloween Depot event and the Street Food Tuesdays with the Queen Mary Sliders, they really, you know, made such a big impact for yeah. me and has helped me through it. You know, I've, I could never, be, I'm always so incredibly grateful for just being a part of every, every event that they've had me. Yeah. It, it's so much fun. No, it, it's a lot of fun. I, yeah. I think I think you fit in naturally with everyone else because everyone else has their own kind of characters and stuff. So then you yeah. putting you in the mix, man. It's it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it, lot it's of fun. so cool. Yeah, yeah. And as a fan, but you get I to see all that too. So it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of fun. That's cool. That's yeah. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice uh, appearance think, from Trixie um, Trickster. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But so I guess with the pandemic, you know. It was interesting having to like adjust with what, what I wanted to do. Right. And then with like what I had to work with. Yeah. Um, but I, I remember it actually, it's going to be one year coming up with this photo shoot I did with one of my close friends where we really, I was like, we're going to, I'm going to go full force. Like I'm just going to start making content and just really just make it for yeah. I have the time. I don't know when we're going to get out of this. So this is the best time to do it because before then I was really working on like designs for merchandise and, you know, trying to see like, oh, are we going back to work? Are we not? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So and a lot of the, the off time that you had during the pandemic, it gave you new uh, creative moves to kind of get the character out it there more did. during the pandemic. It really did. Yeah, yeah, I learned so much. And so after that big photo shoot, I we we did a full day where I tried to you know, I bullet point like time frames so that we weren't spending too much time in places right. and just going all over. And it was really awesome. I remember we were all so tired at the end. <laughs> Cause that's like the first time we've done anything. Yeah. Like, during the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. No. And now, now that you see your, your page, it, it's a lot of amazing photography, uh, both oh, by yeah. professionals, uh, people amazing. who are getting into it and also a lot of fans too. So, yeah. And I, I love meeting new people and the different styles with photography. I think it's so cool. And I really appreciate like anyone that, that does it because you really put, they put their own take on it. Right. And it's I completely cool. Agree. Yeah. But I really, I feel like I've gotten to meet so many photographers and even up and coming photographers. I, I, I love seeing what they can do because it's like, they're so fresh and you haven't seen their work yet and what it like blossoms into. And yeah. I just, I mean, I'm a big supporter of, of anyone in the art. So I'm really open to working like with anybody. I, you know, I said I am, you know, I do m everything myself, but that also comes with all the collaborations with all the other creative people yeah. that you get to work with and, you know, bounce ideas off of. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. I love uh, collaboration 100%. There's just so much more mind power when you guys yeah. come up with something where uh, you guys can come up with like some, something really cool that you wouldn't have thought of yourself that it took like the whole team to come up with, or uh, maybe you had an idea and they, and they, they take that vision and just add to it and enhance it more. And it becomes something like of a masterpiece at the end where you guys are yeah. like, this is going to be fun, you know? So absolutely like this podcast. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. I know we've always been bouncing ideas off of each other. Yeah, and it's just finally, <laughs> and it's finally here. Finally and happening. It, it was so surreal when I saw the name Tricks the Trickster is waiting to join your Zoom, and I was like, "There you oh, go, <laughs> it's happening." <laughs> um, you're 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 currently in your early prime right now, and the the reason why I say early is because you still have so many years to go that you're just at the you're 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 not even. I think you have so much, you're going to grow even more. This is, and that's why I call it your early prime because <laughs> you are, you're moving amazing. You're, you're really talented oh, with your movements you. and your character work, but you, you're still going to grow. Like you, you are still growing. I'm seeing it happen. It's a lot of fun. I'm so excited. Yes. I mean, and I, 
I can't, you know, like, I have to say like that, just the people that have taken a chance on me during this time, like, you know, over the years and, or even gave me a chance, like, you know, Halloween Depot, I met them when I went to convention in New Orleans, Right. but they launched their first ever pop-up show. And I thought, wow, that's so cool. They're looking for vendors. And it was so timely that I just launched my own merchandise in October of 2020. And so I said, you know, I'm interested if you would be willing to have me, you know, I'm not a big, a big business. I'm definitely small. Um, but if, if that's an option, I'd love to be a part of it. And they said, yeah, like we're helping all small businesses during this time. And even though that you are you small, though, looking at the numbers from last weekend of what we sold, <laughs> that is it, 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 super impressive that people just by looking at you outside in the line will buy a shirt to support. That's awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it amazing. It, it, it shows that, you know, just your look overall and, and people just are intrigued by the way you look. So they're going to want to support it and follow your Instagram and stuff. <laughs> and, you know, the the the. The, the thing I always tell the fans is, you know, we have merchandise and it's cool that you buy that. But the biggest the biggest thank you that I always say to fans is just to follow and subscribe our social medias because that's where you'll best be keeping up with everything day to day that we do and stuff. Yeah, and, and that the means, support, it yeah. means so much, too. Yeah. Because with the opportunity, with what you, well, with social media right now, you can use it to help do other things. And I truly think that's what's helped even you know, I have a, a new partnership with a makeup company. And I think it's because when you get people looking at what you're doing, you know, they start looking at you and then that helps you kind of shift your, your, uh, your time and energy into something else so that you could keep doing more and keep creating more. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's a so lot of fun. It's but, exciting. I mean, I'm watching you grow every time I see you and, and, and it's a lot of fun to see the community uh, relate to you and have a good time with you. That's what we're all here Thank for. You. We're all here to have a fun yeah. time and just, you know, really. Yeah. Um, with that and being. It's funny that you see this event, but my first event, I sold probably, I think it was like five, five pieces of my merchandise at the event. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That, But that just means from the time of that last event to this one, the name has grown even more. So Yeah, oh yeah there you go. <laughs> that, that tells you right there that more people are, are getting uh, And I actually in. grew because I had to pick up stilt walking. <laughs> yeah, both metaphorically and the, yes. literally. <laughs> because I honestly, I just learned stilt walking like maybe mid mid. Uh, I'm actually so glad you, you brought that up because we didn't even touch on the stilt walking yet. Oh, that's a big yeah. part of your character. Yes, it's and it's a new thing. Yes. Um, I just learned 2019, just briefly, stilt walked a couple times. I'm the kind of person like, I picked it up pretty well, like right off the bat, but right. I'm the kind of person who likes to go full force. So I, there was a point where I went tallest, highest point and was ready to run. And like, wow. that's not what you should do. You are should definitely, uh, you are a daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, my first time being out in public, I, I did this gargoyle character, right. which you'll see. Um, I did a Krumpus version of tricks nice. and those are the gargoyle wings that I used for that. Nice. Um, but my first time, because I, I personally never work Halloween. I know some people, they want to, yeah. and to each his own, but that's my holiday. Yes. What I want to do. And I, yes. I like spending it with my family. Yes. And so I, I did this gargoyle character and I'm walking up the street because I can't fit on the sidewalk and I'm the tallest version of the stilts. And I've got these like 10 foot heavy wings. Oh my I don't know why I thought this was a good idea, but you know, I was fine. <laughs> Like oh, up man. and downhill. Yeah. And that was my first time, but I wanted to do the holiday in the park still. So that was like my end goal. Right. And Okay. And then we translated into the pandemic where I'm like, okay, I got to be safe. I don't know. I still want to do this. How can I, how can I make it happen? Right. And I'm like, oh, I could do stilts. That That's something I can, I know how to do. You know, I could learn more. I, I picked up a lot during the holiday season. I worked with a, a guy, a mentor, one of them, um, where he's been stilt walking practically as long as I've been alive. Wow. He's a professional and he would give me a lot of advice. I'd ask him, what can I learn today? What, what, what can you show me? And so he really like helped me a lot. You know, um, you know, the entire time talking to you, the one 
uh, characteristic I can pick up from you is eager to learn, eager yeah. to constantly uh, <laughs> what you say and prove how you can do more and, and just improve. I feel like in no one ever way. knows everything. No, I mean, and, and that, so much. that's so cool because you're willing to listen to people. You're willing to uh, get knowledge so you can put your own style on it, listen to what they say, and then just kind of mix the two and just see where it ends up. And yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you. Yes. I have, I've always been like that, even in basketball. I, I was like the underdog. It was like a, a co-ed team in middle school I tried out. Didn't make the team, but I was like, can I practice with you guys though? <laughs> and they practice. said, sure. Yeah. So I was like unofficially on the team, but I was on the team. Yeah. No, and but that's see, but that to be on it. Exactly. That kept the, your, your, you know, you took that not making the team as like, okay, let me keep practicing so I can make the team the next time. And yeah. you kept practicing and practicing and practicing come next year. I'm assuming yeah, they I put made you the on. team. I was gonna say I I'm assuming the they put you yeah, on the team. So. I, I played. I played a lot. Yeah, I had a good yeah. career in basketball. <laughs> I'm good that they. That's glad they put you on the team and they actually recognized you actually yes. putting in the work. So that's good. Um, yes. Yeah. So, looking at the future of tricks. Yes. What can we expect going from? Obviously, we filmed this August fourth, twenty twenty one. So from right. from this point on, what what's what's next for tricks? We got appearances conventions yeah all that fun I stuff. mean there's there's a lot and I mean especially with the haunt season um yeah I'm I'm excited to be to be back at Six Flags that's my home I've been there for nine years yes. I think <laughs> but yeah and then the the season um scare fair very very excited for that's that gonna that's going to be an amazing convention so many different things and attractions brand new convention too yeah yeah a lot of fun yeah the, live entertainment um, um mm -hmm. a lot of vendors the guy running the event is so nice and, yeah we actually know, got to really good yeah you know, we got to talk with them on, the, on saturday and, and he mm -hmm. just i might have to get on the show before the the, the actual event happens to kind of promote it you more, should so. yeah be a good one but uh it, it's exciting thing. As, yeah. I was, as I was saying on the weekend, oh, and here's a flyer to one of her next uh, big yeah. appearances. Come check mm -hmm. her out. This is going to be a brand new thing. Convention, the scare yeah. fair. It's a lot of fun. It's going to be exciting. I'm yeah. very excited. I'm excited. And fun after things. that, you'll just have to, you have to wait and see. check out my page and yeah. see. I always, I always try to put what event I'm going to be at in my bio. Yeah. And I, I definitely try so that you know that I don't, you know, I always put whatever I'm for sure doing, I put it out there. I, uh, I'm going to be there. I'm committed to it. <laughs> I think that you gave the audience a good enough tease to last them through the Halloween season. And whatever yes. comes after that, you're just going to have to yeah. follow and at Tricks the Trickster on Instagram. There's a couple other surprises during the haunt season. You never know. You never know. You never know where you you're going to be. Never know what's going to Yep. Never know. Yeah. Never. I, I'm very excited. It's been really interesting, like, negotiating um, you know, where I want to go and what I want to do. And just, I feel like because when you become a business, you just learn all these things. Like there's just so many aspects to it. So it, that's been really interesting to me. Tricks. I'm so proud of you. I really am. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So <laughs> proud of you. Um, thank you. with all that being said, tricks, what are some, uh, last closing remarks you would like to tell the audience before we, uh, sign off for today? Well, I hope that, you know, whoever's listening, I hope my story is like a story of inspiration that, you know, if you have something that you want to do, you should go for it and do it because whatever you put your mind to, you can make happen. And as long as you're willing to put the hard work and perseverance, like it will happen. You know, uh, things may come along. You might get some obstacles where it might be, you might have to maneuver it. But ultimately, if it's something you really want to do and you're passionate about it, you're going to make it happen and, and you're going to be that much happier for it because now, I mean, I just love what I do that and hit. I just can't wait. That hit right there. Right oh, there. thank you. Uh, yeah. The last question I have to ask before I have you uh, plug in stuff one last time, because you know, got to get the stuff out there, man. There's, oh yeah. There's even something else we forgot to plug, which I'm going to get to right now, but. Oh, okay. My last question I have to ask you. Uh, and it's a it's a traditional question here on the Miles Four podcast, and I think I think we've heard your answer before, but I don't know if it's changed since then. What is okay. your favorite horror movie? 
Oh, it's still trick or treat. Still and trick or treat and Halloween. <laughs> yeah, there. I then. can't really pick between the two. Yeah. You know, it, they both have the classic Halloween style to it, and vintage Halloween. It's a lot of fun. I just love it. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yep. I knew I I had a feeling the answers weren't going to change, but I thought I'd be you know I thought I'd ask again because there's some horror movies that came out since then. So that's true. I'm yeah. I'm very excited for the new Halloween Ooh, that will Halloween come out this kills. year. Mm-hmm. Team Strode versus Team Myers. I'm ready for it. It will be good. We need to yeah. have like one of those you classic mean... uh, like boxing poster shirts made of Laura oh, Strode yes. and Michael Myers facing off. Oh yeah, be a lot of fun. Yeah. Be a lot yeah, of fun. I mean you you'll see. I mean I definitely take things from those movies. Definitely yeah. for inspiration. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure I made a reel to both of those theme songs. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 The <laughs> Halloween theme and the trick or treat theme. Yes. Good stuff. I am on stuff. TikTok also. I was going to bring that up. It. Yes. I'm working on it. It's okay. It's it's a slow start, <laughs> but it, it it's going to evolutionize into something amazing like your other content has. So, what are you, what, what can they find you, you on TikTok? On TikTok, you can find me at Tricks or Treats. Tricks or you, treats? Yes. Tricks or treats. I like that. Yes. I uh, I am. Yeah, I mean, I'm enough, still learning, but I've got some cool, some cool stuff coming up. I'm fortunate enough to be uh, within the first 72 followers. So. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're still growing. It's okay. You Big just support. started TikTok, and it's so good. We're gonna get it out there. We're gonna. We're yeah. Gonna make it, we're gonna blow it up. So. Everything, everything will grow at its pace and yes. when it's, you know, meant to be. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and then obviously, uh, we can find you on Twitter at Tricks the Trickster. Um, so Twitter. Go... I don't have Not Twitter, Twitter yet. I'm sorry. But I, Instagram. I do need to make a Twitter. <laughs> Instagram. I see my head's everywhere. This is. I've, I've got That's so okay. much information in here. It's Instagram yeah. at Twi- Instagram. Tricks the Trickster. Tricks the Trickster. Yes. Yes. All the iconic photos you can That's see of the tricks. main, the main page. The main page definitely will expand, and then for the merch, merch Tricks website. is Pumpkin Party. Tricks is Pumpkin Party dot com. Try Check to keep it, it all in the same realm, easy to remember. Tricks is in everything. That's all I meant. Tricks. Yeah. Tricks, tricks is for or treats. You know, tricks, like tricks trick is for treats. kids. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I I've still been meaning to do a funny photo like holding one a of box those of tricks. Like, tricks cereal box. That'd yeah. be hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be hilarious. I, I yeah, I, I I would I would get a lot of giggles from that one. That'd be funny. Yeah. Well, tricks. I appreciate you taking the time coming on the on the podcast. A near two hour podcast, tricks. Oh my god, two and hours. I'm not, I'm not much of a talker, but you know this is you, just coming out naturally. Yeah, <laughs> no, it is. And 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 when it's been coming out, when you've been doing it all the years, you have it. It's like you said, it just comes out naturally. You just have the stories to tell and and the, and the thing and. And I know I understand this is one of your first solo podcasts. It is. It is. I would really call it like my first podcast, like ultimately where I'm really telling my story. So you heard it first. Um, I am also a fat boy a, down so hard right now. <laughs> <laughs> a big thank you to you for having me here. Oh, thank you. Know, you. I truly appreciate it. You know, you taking the time and getting all this prepared and being patient with me. Oh no, even I, showing me how to do the Zoom and all that. <laughs> I I was the entire time, like I said to the audience, as you're hearing it for the first time here. A lot of this <laughs> stuff I'm hearing for the first time too, so it's all brand new information to me. So it's just taking it all in. And yeah, I mean, I'm excited to listen to it again. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, obviously, I make sure that all my guests can hear them first before I officially post it. That way you can get the final verdict of what you think, and then we get the thumbs up, oh. and it's good to go. Um, all right, I get the uncut version. The uncut. <laughs> that way she can watch it raw and uncut and then kind of see what yeah. she wants. And, and Well, then that's perfect because then I can look back at this moment and, you know, Look back later on Look back <laughs> after later this on. conversation. And I'm pretty sure uh, down the line we'll have you in more videos. Maybe later down the line we'll do another podcast of some sorts. Uh, yeah. Be a lot of fun, you know, just a lot of fun. Um, and, I'm, and I'm so thankful and glad that we finally got you on the show. Yes. Oh, um, I'm so excited. <laughs> yes. So uh, that Thank is going to do to it. Thank you all yes. of my pumpkins that are listening. All the pumpkins that are listening. All uh, the support. <laughs> my I think, pumpkins. Uh, I, I, there's only one way to end this, and that's with an, an infamous tricks laugh. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Tricks the Trickster. You can find her uh, on social media, on Instagram, at Tricks the Trickster, as well as a, 
her her website uh, for her merch. We'll, we'll have everything linked below, so go check it out. Um, definitely support Tricks the Trickster. She's doing amazing work, and we are glad we can be on the sidelines cheering her on. That's that's uh, it's, it's been an awesome ride. Can't wait to see where it goes, and it's only gonna get better from here. <laughs> only gets better oh, yeah. from here. Uh, with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed, uh, today's podcast. If you guys did hit that like button and that bell notification and subscribe, hit all the buttons, all the buttons <laughs> that you can hit that are good. Hit them. The red button that says subscribe with that bell notification, hit that, the like button, uh, go follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the Knights of Horror and at Knights of Horror and, uh, stay tuned. Get your merch. Get the merch. Get the merch. Uh, I will link that down below for uh, our Boo Bros official merch. That's the one I'm going to be pointing to right now since uh, my site's not completely ready. But you can still find a design of mine on that site as well, as well as the other Boo Brothers. So go support them. Um, we will be at Awaken the Spirits August 14th and 15th. We cannot wait. A full weekend of just memories, fun, and a lots and lots of horror. So yeah, it's going to be a lot and of I'll fun. I'll see you at Fright Fest. And you can catch Trick the Trickster this year at Fright Fest. The 2021 season is back. You can yes. catch him, catch her at Fright Fest, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I, I I bet you're excited to get back out there. I know I'm excited to get back out there. Oh, I'm so excited. It's a lot of yeah. fun. It's, it's, it's going to be great the to be back. The anticipation's <laughs> building up, man, and we're already in August. Yeah, I mean, I'm lucky I got these little tastes of it to do things. Yeah. To really full, full on. Full on, put it all in. I'm excited. Yeah. We uh, we are gonna do our best. I I am gonna make it my mission to go at least okay. one night, and All you can right. take me up on that one. Okay. <laughs> I want you to hold me to that one because I'll hold you to it. I'd love I'm to gonna, see you there. I'm gonna do it, and I know I know I'm gonna invite Rob out. Rob's gonna come. Cause maybe Rob, maybe you're gonna get you get a trick or you get a treat. You get a you trick know. or a treat. I mean, we'll see what happens. You know, we'll be Tricks vlogging that treats. one. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, with all that being said, we hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you're listening on Spotify, hit that follow button, uh, Google Podcast, all that fun stuff. Uh, hit the follow button. We appreciate it. Until then, we will see you guys next week for the Mile Sword Podcast. Woo! You're moving into a dimension of